Hey kids, it's uh, January 13th, 2011, and as promised, HR 227, GPO finally got it out. A bill to prevent children's access to firearms. This is an interesting one. It's not a really long read, though, so I'm going to put the links to that and the associated um, parts of the United States Code that it relates to, but... Um, for the first part of it, um, increasing youth gun safety by raising the age of handgun eligibility and prohibiting youth from possessing semi-automatic weapons. Uh, basically, you're uh, if you're you, you're basically a child now until you're 21. That's what it says. Um, the she, uh, Sheila Jackson Lee wants to make it so that you can't own a handgun. Uh, possess ammunition for a handgun, which that's a gray area, and I'll explain in a minute. Possess a semi-automatic weapon or any large capacity ammunition feeding device. Uh, a couple problems with this. First of all, and there, and there are exceptions in the in the bill for if you're in the military or if you're like farming or ranching or whatever. But basically, outside of that, you know, you can't. You can't own one, you can't possess one until you're at least 21 years of age. It doesn't, uh, it's not an outright ban because it doesn't specify bolt action weapons. So I'm assuming, you know, at 18 years old, you could, you know, get a 30 out 6 bolt action or something. But it does pretty much any kind of semi, it clearly says semi automatic assault weapon, whatever that means, right? Uh, and possessing the ammunition. You know, but there's a couple problems with this. Uh, first of all, since when is a 19 year old who can, you know, pack a M16 and go to war for our country, but yet they can't pack a AR-15 at home? That don't make no sense. That's number one. Number two, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm not a super gun guru, I'm kind of very new to firearms, but. I think some of your cowboy shooters, like your lever actions or whatever, don't they shoot handgun ammunition? So even though the rifle itself would be legal to possess, you can't have the ammunition for it because, oh, it shoots 45 ACP. That's just dumb. <laughs> so, and again, like I said, they make some exceptions for um, if the child picks up the weapon in defense of the home if you're working on a ranch or a farm and the person who owns the property gives permission um, so on and so forth uh, then of course they uh, enhance penalty for use possession of handguns semi-automatic weapons and the transfer of such that's part of it there uh, gun storage and safety devices for all firearms this is section four pretty much it states that every single firearm sold from here on out, if this gets uh, passed, has to be sold with some kind of a storage or safety device. Every firearm, doesn't matter what it is, it has to be sold with one. You don't have that choice. That's just going to raise the cost of these uh, of, of weaponry and, and firearms. Uh, goes into a responsibility of adults for death and injury caused by child access to firearms. Actually, this section uh, was actually written pretty well, although I still don't agree with it. But it was, it was, what was good about it is, is it says things like, um, you know, if the child uses the firearm in a lawful act of self-defense or defense of one or more other persons, they obviously can't charge you with allowing the kid to have access to a firearm. So that's kind of, you know, like there was some, someone was thinking when they wrote that, but uh, let's see, continuing on, requirement that a child be accompanied by an adult during a gun show. I don't know of any kids that run around gun shows, so I don't even know why this is, um, you know, <laughs> even a question. I, uh, section 7, grants for gun safety education programs. It, they're, now, what's interesting is, is, there's no dollar sign attached to this. And I said this in one of my other videos, I think, that a lot of bills that are coming out 
to fund projects and stuff, they're deliberately leaving specific amounts blank because they're afraid of people getting pissed off, mad that, oh, you're spending money we don't have. But, you know, there's supposedly grants for gun safety education programs. And then Section 8, which I find interesting, too, because this is a mandate, and as I look at it right now, it's an unfunded mandate, so it's just more expense pushed on to the states. Um, each school district should provide or participate in a firearm safety program for students in grades kindergarten through 12. Again, this goes back to, you know, we're, we're, we're not worried about the important things we're teaching in school, like advanced mathematics and science and history, but we're worried about things that are that really should be handled in the home, whether, you know, um, there was another bill talking about uh, eating disorders, and I, I made mention of the fact that, um, you know, we're worried about teaching kids about eating disorders and stuff. So, but the links to the bill and the appropriate sections that it relates to are down below. Uh, finally, the government printing office got off their took us and got it done, and you can read it for yourself. Me, personally, I'd vote no. It's not even open for consideration. One other thing I'm a little uh, concerned about is, is it says large capacity ammunition defeating device uh, is one of the things that is prohibited. But there's no definition for what a large capacity feeding device is. So, what is it? A five round clip? I mean, it's it's basically open to interpretation by whoever gets this power and authority to determine what a large capacity ammunition feeding device is. So, I'm just going to float it out there. You guys check it out. My answer is I'd vote no. And uh, wow, it's been a while since I did one of these. Until next time, peace. God bless you all, and God bless the Republic.